Well, today was the first round of the Barbasol Championship at the Champions at Keen Trace. The pros start teeing off early this morning. Hannah. Yes, they did. Let's get out now to the course where Claire Crouch and Keith Farmer are live tonight. Hey, good evening, Haley and Kevin. Yes, we are still live here out at Champions at Keen Trace on a hot and muggy Thursday evening here at the Barbasol Championship. Been a lot of fun. Finally, the golf has begun. Yes. Uh, 72 holes to decide who is going to ho hoist the trophy, just as Troy Merritt did a year ago. That's right. And of course, people out here drinking lots of water. We've been drinking lots of yes. water, trying to stay cool, doing whatever we can. But lots of fans out here also beating the heat by just taking a nice walk, following a very notable golfer here at the Barbasol Championship. You probably know who we're talking about, but we're going to let Conroy Deluche tell you a little bit more now. Let's go live to him across the course. Hey, Claire and Keith. There are certainly plenty of young guns to follow who are from Kentucky and even some older pros, some major winners, but there's one man in particular that many people here are following. He is, of course, the man in the colorful pants, Mr. Grippin and Rippin himself, John Daly. This was Daly as he rolled up to the ninth green earlier this afternoon. Hundreds followed him from hole to hole, starting with his first hole all the way up to his putt on the 18th. John Hardesty got here early and tried to follow Daly's opening tee shot, but quickly lost it in the sun. I couldn't tell. I was so fast and the haze, I couldn't pick it up, but it was just fun to see his pants and, uh, <laughs> and see him tee off. He's always got the flamboyant pants on, so he's a, he's a great entertainer, but excited too to support the local guys. Saw there were seven or eight former UK players in this, so hopefully they can have a good showing as well. Daly certainly stands out for his long bombs and his colorful pants as both those guys talked about and they weren't the only ones who were here to see John Daly and there were many other golfers here though to pay attention to especially as the second man we interviewed alluded to local players. Now we talked to Gary o Christian over at the Golf Channel. He talked to us about some of those players. You'll hear from him coming up at six. For now we'll send it back over to Claire and Keith. Very cool, Conroy. Thank you. And yes, lots of local guys, lots of good golf out here today. Yeah, we got the six uh, Kentucky golfers, former UK golfers that are here. You got a Josh Teeter as well uh, that we saw come through who went to Henry Clay and on to Moorhead State. So a lot of local connections mm -hmm. to follow if you don't go along looking for John Daly, maybe following <laughs> the defending champ Troy Merritt as well. Uh, let's talk a bit about a little bit of this golf because we've yeah. been able to see some of it and let's show you what happened. We talked about John Daly earlier and we saw John Daly come up the 18th and he missed his birdie putt, had to settle for the tap in par putt right here, finished at one under par for his round. Over to the ninth green and that's where we found Nick Taylor tied for the lead at the par three ninth. He would par out. So he was tied for the lead, but that was only momentarily because <laughs> really, literally two minutes later, you go back over to the 18th and JT Poston with this long birdie putt. Oh, wow. The pin even still in and he knocks it right in. So JT Poston, your leader at 10 under par. And something cool. Well, I drove the ball well, I just putted bad. I just couldn't make anything. and. No, the hole I made seven, I was at four. I just, I didn't miss a shot. Just, uh, it was really weird. But uh, no, I hit it good. I just couldn't make anything today. The course, the greens had had been a little on the firmer side at the start of the week, firmer than I think most guys would expect. But um, a lot of rain last night, and so they're they're soft and they're really good bent greens, and you can make a lot of putts. Um, they're rolling really well. So yeah, you hit you hit the fairway, and you get a lot of wedges in your hand, and guys are going to make a lot of birdies today. Yes, so it was a lift, clean, and play situation So because we got all the rain last night, mm -hmm. which basically means a lot of times their balls will get stuck into the turf. You're allowed to pick it up, clean it off, lay it back down. It makes it so much easier to hit great shots when you're a professional like that. So that's why we saw such low scores today. That may change you know, as we continue to have this heat and sure. it dries out. Josh Teeter, the best of the local golfers, he's right now four under par through nine holes. Great, yeah, we saw him right here on yep. the 18, made a really nice uh, yep. putt. 
Exactly. I'm Good learning. I'm, I'm learning a lot here at the course. Something cool about our current leader, JT Poston. He and his caddy have a number 22 on yep. their hats today in honor of course Jared Lorenzen. For every birdie he made, they were donating $22 to the Jared Lorenzen Memorial Fund, of course, to help uh, Jared Lorenzen's kids go to college. They raised a good chunk of money today. Yeah. Ten birdies and all. Yeah, Drew Franklin, in fact, said he was doing that as well, and he told him at one point, um, uh, "Lay off the birdies." <laughs> yeah, it's like enough already. It's too many. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, we've got a lot more to get to as we continue our live coverage here at the Barbasol Championship. But for now, for Keith Farmer, I'm Claire Crouch. Back to you. Thank you, guys. We appreciate it.